Hello everyone and welcome. In this video I'm going to use this five gallon bucket with an American flag on it to make you sad about V8 engines. But first, let's start off with some good news. Yamaha, with the help of Toyota, has developed a hydrogen powered V8 engine. Look at it. Look at that ridiculous exhaust. It is glorious and it has no carbon emissions. A clean V8 engine. What is not to love? So this engine has been developed using the 5 liter V8 engine from the Lexus RCF and then modifying it to run on hydrogen. And as you can see looking at the horsepower and torque, it's actually very similar in numbers to the Lexus RCF. So very similar to the gasoline engine, except now we're only using hydrogen as our fuel source, meaning our emissions are water and we don't have to worry about carbon emissions at all, a clean V8 engine. So in order to understand the problem here and get to our five gallon buckets, let's first compare the Lexus RCF to existing hydrogen powered vehicles. So we're going to use the Toyota Mirai, which uses a fuel cell in order to power itself. So the Toyota Mirai does have significantly less power uh, and less torque. That's fine. We're not going to worry about that yet. Uh, our Lexus RCF has a fuel tank of 17.4 gallons and it gets a combined rating of 19 miles per gallon, giving it a range of about three 130 miles and it has a trunk of 10.1 cubic feet. We'll get into why that trunk size is important in a moment. The Toyota Mirai has 5.6 kilograms of hydrogen stored on board. This is basically how we measure how much hydrogen you store in a vehicle because it's stored as a compressed gas rather than a liquid that you can simply measure in gallons. So we have 5.6 kilograms of hydrogen that is within 142.2 liters of hydrogen storage tanks. There's actually three tanks in in the Toyota Mirai and it gets a combined uh, MPGE rating of 65. So that gives it a range of about 357 miles and it has a 9.6 cubic foot trunk. So as we look at these, both of these technologies exist today. Obviously both of these technologies work. All right, let's dive straight into the problem. So let's assume we're going to create a Lexus RCF that instead of running on gasoline, it runs on hydrogen. So instead of putting gasoline in that 17.4 gallon tank, we're going to fill it with hydrogen. Now, the problem here is that hydrogen is at 10,000 PSI, but let's just assume we can safely use this 17.4 gallon tank and fill it with this hydrogen at 10,000 PSI uh, because we have that space available to use. So we have that about 17.5 gallons, about 66 liters, and we want to figure out how much hydrogen can we store within this fuel tank. So if we look at our Toyota Mirai, we know that we have 5.6 kilograms of hydrogen within 142.2 liters. So if we take that 5.6 divided by 142.2, that tells us how many kilograms of hydrogen we have per liter, which is about 0.04. Now if we have 66 liters of available space to store that hydrogen, well that tells us we have 2.6 kilograms of hydrogen available to use. Okay, so we know how much hydrogen we have, but how far can that take us? So an interesting thing about hydrogen is its energy content. So one kilogram of hydrogen has about 33.3 kilowatt hours worth of energy in it. Now, one gallon of gasoline has about 33.7 kilowatt hours of energy in it. It is a rare example of metric and American units uh, just having this beautiful compatibility here where one gallon of gas is the energy equivalency of about about one kilogram of hydrogen. Okay, on top of that, Hydrogen is also roughly equal in efficiency uh, when used in a combustion engine as gasoline. Current studies show that it's slightly less efficient, uh, but theoretically they have similar potentials as far as efficiency is concerned. So knowing that, and because we know our Lexus RCF gets 19 miles per gallon, and a gallon is roughly equivalent to a kilogram and they have similar efficiencies, well that means that this Lexus RCF powered by hydrogen is going to get 19 miles per kilogram. And and 19 times 2.6 means our hydrogen Lexus RCF has a range of only 50 miles. And that is at the EPA rating, so meaning driving relatively lightly. You know, if you're gonna actually put your foot down and have some fun, you could easily cut that in half and only have 25 miles of range. 
So when it comes to range, the number everyone loves to talk about is 300 miles. We want our cars to be able to travel 300 miles without stopping. That's what we're used to with our gasoline cars. So electric cars, hydrogen cars, whatever it is, it needs to hit 300 miles. So let's look using these buckets as a visual, how much space is required in order to store enough hydrogen to have a V8 powered vehicle travel 300 miles. So each one of these is five gallons. Uh, we just calculated that with 17.5 gallons, in other words, three and a half of these buckets, we can travel 50 miles. So if we multiply that by six, we get 300 miles. So three and a half of these buckets times six gives us 21 buckets. Okay, so let's see how much space 21 of these buckets takes up. And keep in mind, we are putting these inside of a hatchback with the rear seats folded down. In other words, a vehicle that has a lot of storage space. This isn't a sports car with not a lot of space to store fuel or cargo. And yes, I did verify that these are in fact five gallon buckets. They are just slightly larger, but it's not enough that it dramatically affects the purpose of this demonstration. Keep in mind that the actual storage vessels are going to be bulkier than this in order to compensate for the extremely high pressure of the hydrogen inside. Okay, so show me a sports car that you can fit this many five gallon buckets in. It doesn't work. But you might say, Jason, this is disingenuous, right? The storage tanks aren't a bunch of individual buckets. Certainly you'd put it in a more efficient shape, right? Okay, hold that thought. Beautifully branded. Okay, so show me a sports car that you can fit this inside of. And keep in mind, this is gonna be at 10,000 PSI. So wherever it's located, it needs to be sure that in the event of a car crash, it's going to be kept safe. Oh, and this is 95 gallons. So we still need two more of these in order to get to 105, in order to have that 300 mile range. So if we calculate the volume required in order to store enough hydrogen for this Lexus RCF to travel 300 miles, it is 14.1 cubic feet, which as you can see is larger than the entire trunk of the RCF. And that's not even considering that it needs to be a pressure vessel that's holding all this hydrogen. There's not even enough space in the trunk to do it. And then you don't even have a trunk. Now to further demonstrate how silly this is, let's analyze an electric car and talk about how much volume it needs to travel 300 miles. So we can do that by looking at an individual battery module. At this point, this is dated technology. This is from the Tesla Model S. And so we have about 16 liters required for one of these modules, which gives you 5.2 kilowatt hours. So you can do the math and find out that you need about 300 liters total in order to travel 300 miles, significantly less than you would need with hydrogen. And we're talking about a vehicle that has a thousand horsepower, easily can hit 300 miles. And although it is similar in size to a Toyota Mirai, instead of only 10 cubic feet, it has 25 cubic feet of storage. Now, yes, it's a hatchback, so a bit of an advantage there, but the point remaining that even a battery does a better job than hydrogen, uh, in this case of trying to get something to travel 300 miles and still be sporty. Okay, so we need to be able to store all of this hydrogen in a smaller space. So how about as a liquid? Well, liquid hydrogen can store 75% more hydrogen in the same amount of space as gaseous hydrogen held at 10,000 PSI. So instead of 21 buckets, we only need 12 buckets. Okay, so clearly liquid hydrogen improves this quite a bit, but it's still a ton of space that we're talking about here, and there's an even bigger problem. So if you want to store a lot of hydrogen at room temperature, which is the temperature we drive around in, well, then you have to compress it into a really high pressure so you can squeeze a lot of hydrogen into a small space. But you could have even more hydrogen if instead of a gas, that hydrogen was a liquid, which is possible. You can have liquid hydrogen at atmospheric pressure 
if you're able to bring the temperature down low enough to minus 253 degrees Celsius, just 20 degrees warmer than absolute zero. If you can get a liquid that cold, if you can get hydrogen that cold, it will condense into a liquid and improve its storage capacity by 75%. You've got 0.071 kilograms per liter rather than 0.04 kilograms per liter. Now, the challenge here is, of course, none of our garages are, you know, minus 253 degrees Celsius, but this has been done. In fact, BMW unveiled in 2006 the Hydrogen 7, which ran on liquid hydrogen with liquid stored hydrogen. So it had this really fancy uh, storage tank, which was able, you know, super well insulated so it could store this liquid hydrogen for a certain amount of time. So after about 17 hours, enough energy starts to seep into that liquid hydrogen tank that that hydrogen wants to start to boil. So the pressure starts to increase, right? And so as that pressure increases, of course you have to release it. Otherwise you're basically just, you know, building this bomb within uh, your car. So you have to release that pressure. And so after about 17 hours, that's what the BMW Hydrogen 7 does if it's just sitting there. It starts venting out your fuel <laughs> to the atmosphere. And after about 10 to 12 days, according to an article I found on Wired on the subject, uh, that fuel is gone. <laughs> so all of your fuel, if the car is just sitting there, just escapes, uh, which there's a very interesting quote from BMW's press kit, which says, parking in closed in spaces is currently not allowed. In other words, you cannot park this thing inside of your garage because it's just gonna vent all of the fuel inside your garage. Now you don't actually have to worry too much, uh, I don't think, about the fuel because they use a catalytic converter so that as that hydrogen is escaping, it mixes it with oxygen and so you just have water being vented out. Uh, but it's still a problem, right? You're gonna fill your garage with the fuel from your tank that you paid for and now it's worthless and it's just all over your garage. So they don't let you park it uh, in a closed space and you cannot have a garage at minus 253 degrees Celsius uh, at least not yet or it would require a ton of energy in order to keep a garage that cold so your hydrogen doesn't escape uh, so it doesn't really work at a liquid that's the challenge there so you can store hydrogen as a liquid, you can store hydrogen as a compressed gas. There's a reason why we do it that way today. There are other ways of storing hydrogen. It can be stored as a solid. However, I would urge some skepticism when you're reading about this kind of technology and storing hydrogen as a solid attached to other metals because there is an energy required to split hydrogen away from those other elements in order to then use it. So when you're considering solid storage of hydrogen, you must take into consideration how much energy does it take to break away that hydrogen in order to then use it within the vehicle and is that energy loss worth storing it that way in the first place so use some skepticism when looking at solid storage of hydrogen Okay, so here's the sad news for combustion enthusiasts. You could try to solve this incredibly difficult, if not impossible problem, that is hydrogen storage for combustion engines, or you could use technology that exists today. So here's how many buckets you would need if you were using a fuel cell and you wanted to travel 300 miles. Just six buckets. And again, this technology exists today. So through the use of five gallon buckets, we now understand that fuel cells are the best method for using hydrogen as a fuel source. The problem is boring. I mean, I don't actually think fuel cells are that boring. It's kind of exciting technology, but they don't make any sound, right? It's basically just driving an electric car. So if you're trying to appease enthusiasts by having this V8 engine running on hydrogen, uh, you know, the disappointing fact is it has to pretty much be a fuel cell if it's going to have any reasonable range. And this is not bringing in many other concerns that are related to hydrogen, but I think could be technically solved. Uh, the fact that hydrogen is about $15 per kilogram uh, today, so imagine spending $15 uh, per gallon, uh, safely storing it, packaging, getting it all within the vehicle uh, at crazy high pressures without having any leaks. Um, you know, that is a challenge. So even if you can fit it all in there, you also have to make sure that it is safe. Uh, and these tanks are expensive as well. So there are a lot of challenges, but the biggest one simply being how much space it takes up if you're going to have an inefficient V8 engine uh, that is powering the vehicle. So thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. And I will have some links to some other hydrogen related videos if you're interested in checking those out.